The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Rebecca Eggenschwiller is an Associate Professor of English at Montgomery College Rockville, where she also coordinates the English Department's PACE program and serves on several committees. After studying antebellum American literature at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, she began teaching at the community college level in both literature and composition. Recently, she has become active in promoting the role of humanities in community college education and has presented at the CCHA and published a short article in the Chronicle on related topics. My approach, I guess, is a little bit different because I used the Smithsonian experience in a basic composition course. Um, so some of the content focus that we've seen from like Virginia's great presentation. We don't have that there, um, but I think I came up with a way to do it that worked pretty well. Um, so for my project, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to integrate uh, the Smithsonian visit into an English 101A PACE course. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what that means in a second, but I am the coordinator for PACE, so that's partly why I wanted to do it. But I also wanted to do it because I think it serves this particular population pretty well. Um, so just quickly, for those who don't know, English 101A is just first semester composition, um, but the A, you might notice, it, uh, means that these are students who are coming from either developmental or AELP programs, and it's five credit hours instead of the three that English 101 has. And those, are, those hours are meant to help students who might need a little extra help in grammar and uh, just putting an essay together um, and those kinds of things. So students in traditional 101A courses might struggle with grammar, essay development, and critical thinking skills. Um, with the PACE program, uh, we integrate a classroom, so you have some traditional 101A students and some students who are PACE students. Uh, the purpose of the PACE program is to take students who would have been placed in developmental classes and bring them to college level English without having to go through those developmental classes. So it's saving students, you know, time and money. Um, but we don't just uh, pick any of these students. So PACE students specifically have reading scores that are at college level. Um, but sentence skill scores that are below college level. And the reason we target that population is because we think that um, the reading scores tend to be associated with better critical thinking skills. Um, so a lot of times these students are ready to kind of embrace college level ideas and material, but they might not have the, the background in terms of essay structure, grammar, and things like that. Um, they also have to complete a, and pass a writing sample in order to be in this program. Um, so these are, you know, it's a really specific population, and one of the things that we worry about with this population, you can see the last thing there, um, their academic success skills. They might not see themselves as college students. They might not see, they probably don't see themselves as academics. Um, so the reason I wanted to, to use the project for this class is to kind of encourage them to see themselves as academics and to see how academics can be applied to outside of the classroom as well. So the Smithsonian was a really great opportunity to do that. Um, I thought I'd just briefly talk about this since it kind of fits in. Um, I struggled a little bit with this just because I never want to give my students something and say, there, you learned it, now give it back to me, <laughs> okay? Just repeat it back, um, okay? And my idea about education really isn't to help students fit into the world that exists. I don't really like that idea. Um, I really want to equip my students to transform the world that exists. Um, so I knew I wanted to do something with that and to have them think critically. So my kind of project was to use the Smithsonian visit in a way that wasn't just asking them go and observe and then report back, but actually think critically and closely about how a museum presents information to you. Um, so this addresses a couple things with 101A. I'm not gonna go too much into this, but we're always looking to get students 
critical thinking going and even better than it is. Um, and this is something the English department talks a lot about. So I knew I wanted my assignment to address that. And I also wanted it to create excitement and engagement for specifically my PACE students and all the students in the class, obviously. Um, so what I ended up doing was creating an assignment, I'm just going to go there, um, I was creating an assignment that asked students to go to the museum, um, but instead of just kind of, uh, you know, looking at one exhibit and writing a paper on that exhibit, they got to choose an exhibit that appealed to them at the National Museum of American History. Um, so we did, kind of did an example together and then I set them free. Um, but what they were doing was not looking at the information presented, but looking at how the information was being presented. Um, so the questions there, this is directly from my assignment sheet, but you can see how are museums shaping our sense of history and culture? What impressions do museums leave on us? Um, so they got to kind of explore the museum and look at an exhibit that was interesting to them, but then think about, okay, why is the museum presenting this object instead of these other objects? How is it being presented? We talked about everything, including lighting, the music, all of these kinds of things that go into creating an experience. And then their job was to analyze those things and, and kind of really think critically about how the museum was shaping their sense of this information. Um, so to lead up to this, I'm not going to read all that, uh, but to lead up to this, we did a lot of prep work in class, including um, the first essay that they read was called Why I Hate Museums. Um, so I wanted to free them up a little bit to be able to critique the museum because I think sometimes they feel like, oh, my professor wants me to like this. I like it. Um, okay. So I wanted to get them over that. So we didn't, we, we got into that right away. Um, and this essay is like, you know, they're boring and I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> that's kind of their critique. Uh, we also looked at like how technology and innovation was being used in the museum exhibits themselves. And I showed them some pictures before we went and asked, you know, there was one picture where this had this, you know, ornate Victorian room and then there was a big screen that you were supposed to interact with. And I said, does this help or hurt the exhibit, right? And so we were thinking about kind of all different parts and the options that are available when we do put an exhibit together. Um, so we did a lot of reading and discussing leading up to the museum visit, um, which I think helped prepare them. I was a little nervous about the, the actual visit itself um, because, you know, asking students to do something outside of class sometimes, especially since they're 101A students, first year students, and, and the PACE students, uh, I was a little nervous. But they were pretty excited and they already had some pretty good feelings about museums before we went. Um, and I think the exhibit or the visit itself went pretty well. Um, so most of them showed up. That was good. Um, some of them were on time. Pretty good. Okay. Um, I didn't take a group picture, but that's my fault. Um, so uh, we did one example as a group. So we walked through this exhibit and I kind of asked them questions, you know, and, and kind of led them through it. And then, like I said, I let them go off and choose whatever exhibit they themselves wanted to write about. Um, so uh, after visiting, uh, I had like many others, really good feedback. I did want to include the top quote because I want to be fair. Some of the exhibits made her sleepy. That's okay. Um, okay, it's good to know that. Um, but um, the, the rest of the feedback, as you can see, it was overwhelmingly positive. This isn't just me cherry picking, um, but it really was. And they, they felt excited, which is kind of my goal. Um, they felt excited to be able to write a paper. As you can see, um, one of them there, uh, they say normally in an assignment like this, we would have to just use previous knowledge, but with this, it felt it was fresh in our heads and it was a unique approach. And they really liked visiting the museum. I like to a degree I was surprised by. Um, so they enjoyed it a lot and that was good. And I also did have um, a specific task for them while they were there. They had to, you know, it was a bunch of questions like, what's the lighting like? What is the sound? What is all this? So they had to show me their notes before they left. So because I was worried that somebody would just be like, yeah, I saw it, I'm leaving. Um, so that, I think that's a good kind of way to do it. Um, but I did just want to show you, so that this was a paper, obviously. In a composition course, you would expect the, out, the final project to be a paper, I think. Um, so these are just two thesis statements that I got that I felt really kind of showcase 
what I was aiming for and how the students achieved it. So the first one, um, he looked at this exhibit, The Price of Freedom, Americans at War. Um, and he said it creates an informative and impressive view of military technology, um, but falls short um, on war facts and real facts and information, giving the museum an um, incomplete view of the wars, the, the attendee. OK, um, so I really like that because he has the positives, but he's also willing to say, hey, here's what could make this better. And the, the next one, too, the student visited the African American History Exhibit, which really is just meant to be a preview, right, um, now that we have the other museum. But she said um, it failed to give a sense of pride, to create a sense of pride. Um, and she really kind of dug into the details and said, here's what um, I did, here's what, you know, to me wasn't working about it. And Here's what I would have done differently. Um, so this is exactly the kind of critical thinking I wanted to see. So I was very pleased with that. And I've tried other assignments to promote this kind of critical thinking before. But sometimes it's kind of dry, right? Like when you ask them to just like read these articles, think about it, right? Um, it's hard for them to engage. And in this, I think the pictures show that too. They really were engaged while they were there. And they were interested in conveying what they had to say about it. So my hope is this creates the kind of students that can go out and kind of feel like they can contribute and change the world that they're in instead of just kind of letting information hit them passively. And that's it.